here. Box in a box. And it came with the pads. Good. Next up. We've got new coil springs. And the third thing I got, I went by my buddy's shop, Rock Your 4x4. His name is Jason, and he hooked me up with a set of upper rear control arms from a JK. Um, now, I haven't ever tried this, but I have heard that if you take the upper rear controller arms, control arms from a JK, you can put them on the lowers of an XJ or a ZJ and correct your angles instead of buying like adjustable control arms or longer control arms um, is it going to work i don't know we'll give it a try and put it to the test now this is one set he said come back in another week or two and he'll have another set they're just takeoffs from factory when they add a new lift so he gave these to me which is completely awesome thank you jason but i asked him how much he would charge if somebody else walked in there and he said twenty dollars a set so I have to take that off of the budget $20 for this set if we go with the uh, other ones too that'll be 40 bucks the JK upper rear control arm as opposed to the factory lower control arm on the ZJ. So whenever this sits at factory ride height this lower control arm is kind of more straight across, right? When you jack it up, we've lifted it about three and a half inches, that brings it down at an angle and now your pinion angle has changed. So we're probably going to get some driveline vibrations because we don't have the right angle on this pointed up towards the transfer case. So I've gone over this before but whenever you have a drive shaft that is not a double carden, it's a slip yoke and you don't want your pinion pointed straight at it. You want it offset. So if this one is straight, you want this one to be straight and then the drive shaft goes up at an angle uh, in between. So this control arm is longer, which tells me that it's going to bring the pinion down because this is going to come out further at the bottom when I put this new control arm in, and it's going to point that back down more like it was at factory. So I think this is going to work. Another thing that I want to do, if you'll remember last time, I couldn't get this... Um, bolt loose right here. Well, I was kind of being a weenie. I finally got my breaker bar out and was able to break that free. So I called up Rough Country and they have a bracket that brings this down and what that will do is bring the axle back into the center because if you remember from the last video the axle right now is probably an inch or two too far over to the passenger side and you can tell right here because the um, sway bar is contacting the spring. Um, so I need to get that. I'm waiting on that in the mail. I'll get that located further down. That'll center the axle. But at the same time, I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the sway bar. Now, if you're driving this as a daily driver, I would recommend keeping the sway bar. But uh, for me, I don't plan on driving this on the street that much, and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the rear sway bar. I'll probably keep the front sway bar or make some extensions for that one. Oh, and that bracket from Rough Country, I think they said it was only like 32 bucks, so it's still cheap enough for the cheap Jeep.
Ta-da! You can see that's better already. thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that the lower control arms, the stock ones, are wider than these upper JK ones. So um, what I'm doing to combat that is putting washers on either side just to make it a little thicker and then I'm going to squeeze the bejesus out of these bolts to get the clamps to just kind of clamp down on those. But uh, for the time being, don't try this at home. I will be your uh, test guinea pig and figure out how this works and let you know later on in the series. Okay, well that worked better than expected actually. Um, I, those washers helped here, so I just cranked it down quite a bit until those washers stopped wiggling around in there. And uh, I've got it jacked up now at ride height, and the axle is at about stock angle, it looks like, so I think that's going to help. Well, it's at the right angle for the kind of drive shaft that I have, which is the slip yoke. If you had a double carden, you would want it pointed up, but uh, as it is, this is perfect. So I think it's going to work really well. Well that sucks. I broke my only 12 point half inch socket. So that means another trip to the store. Lucky me! I had an idea. What if I try to repair it instead? I can grind it right there and weld it. Maybe it'll work. Got nothing to lose, I guess. Well... Maybe that'll work for now, keep me from having to go to the store today anyway. Here's a little trick when you're working on these tie rod ends. I used to use a pickle fork and jam it in there and break this loose and that would work well but it would always tend to break the boot or rip the boot so take your castle nut off and turn it upside down and screw it down until it's completely flush with the top of that bolt sticking out there and then take you a big hammer like this just give it one good whack you want to make sure you're not angled or it'll mess it up, but hit it straight down. Harder. There we go. Now take that back off. And it should just fall out. There we go. And that's how you do it.
right, here's a question I get a lot. Uh, when people are changing their U-joints when they're done, they notice that it's a lot stiffer than when they started, and they want to know what they did wrong. Well, don't worry about it too much. It'll probably work its way out. But to fix that, all you need is to smack it with the hammer a few times. What you've done is just pounded it too hard on one side, and the clips are kind of binding. So all you need to do is take it, Now I'm not hitting on the U-joint itself, I'm actually just whacking it right here so that it'll loosen up. And by doing that, you can see how much looser it is already. Okay guys, check it out. We're looking at the front suspension. This is the lower arm on the front right. So the rear lift went so well with the JK arms that I went back to my buddy's shop at uh, Rock Your 4x4 and got another set of these JK arms. But when I came in here and decided to mock them up here, they are much longer than the what they were on the rear. So I brought the rears over here to show you. This is the rear arm, and the rear arm is about an inch longer. Let me see. Uh, the rear arm is about an inch and a half longer than the front arm and the JK arm is even longer than that probably about two inches or two and a half inches so I could put this JK arm on here that'll lengthen the front axle out front quite a bit but then the the caster would be way off I would have to probably uh, extend the upper arms as well, which I could do, but we're trying to keep this simple here. So I think I'm going to attempt to put the rear lower arms on the front lower arms, and that'll pretty much achieve the same thing that I achieved on the rear, which is just to lengthen it by about three quarters of an inch to bring that caster back down, uh, the angle of the pinion back down to where we started before we lifted this thing. Whoa. I guess I can put my spring in now. So that cam bolt will not come loose. It's rusted to the metal sleeve on the inside of that bushing. And uh, this is why they say just empty every pocket when you own a Jeep. You always come up with something like this. So I've tried beating on it, but uh, to no avail. Most people say to cut it out, but the problem there is I have to go buy more of these cam bolts, which are pretty expensive and hard to find. So, I'm going to try beating on it some more, and if that doesn't work, I'll be forced to cut it out. Can't get a good swing at it because of where it's at. going on with that thing? It's bending the bracket. Holy crap. There we go. Holy smokes. I completely screwed that up. I'll just have to whack it back. Alright, now we're on the driver's side, and it looks like I got lucky over here. This side has lots of oil leaks, and this one I can push out with my finger. Uh, I guess that's the good thing about having a leaky vehicle. You don't have to worry about rusted parts. So if you live in Canada, just make sure you have a big oil leak. That's kind of silly. The bolt is so long that it goes back and hits the uh, 
pumpkin over here and I can't get it out. I got an idea. Let's see if this works. Well, that worked. Okay, so I still have that from one side, and I need to recreate it. So I found this bolt in my bolt bin, and I still have this end of the cam lock, and I have this piece which I cut. So hopefully we can uh, knock this out, weld it to here, and then I'll have to grind down the threads over here in the right spot be able to make a new one of these. Okay, cross your fingers. Here we go. No? Cross them? You didn't cross your fingers, did you? Oh, you did that time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ta-da! Okay, folks, there you go. Exact, oh, that's hot. Exact replica.